No one likes long intros, so let's just get right into the video. I'm going to be showing you guys a quick way to make 3D text really easily in After Effects. Looks something like that. And it's super easy to do. Let me go ahead and show you. First thing you got to do is import your cinematic that you're going to be using. I've already done that. So I'm just going to go ahead and make a new composition. Actually, just by dragging it to the new composition button. And here we go. And obviously, the, the smoother your cinematic is, the easier this is going to be. So this is just like a very smooth motion. I actually downloaded it online. So I'm going to go ahead and right click the clip and track the camera. And this is an automatic step. And if your cinematic is smooth enough, it'll be a very easy process. It's all just happening behind the scenes. You're going to want to trim up your, um, your clip and your composition. If you have like a weird start and a weird end, you just want to be tracking the part that is super smooth, which I already have in this clip. So once you've tracked that, I'll show you how to make the text and make it look a little bit better than your average text. And I'll show you a couple tricks with that. So once you got everything tracked, go ahead and find the place that you want your text to be. And I'm just going to draw a lasso around most of these so that I can get a nice like sample of this floor right here. Just right click and create text and camera. So we've got a 3D camera already and we've got our text which we're going to be using. I'm going to go ahead and actually turn off the 3D on that text and sort of reset it by going to position and reset that just so I have some standard text here. You could also just make that from scratch. And from here I'm going to go ahead and make a new solid layer, call it element. Because I'm going to be using Element 3D, which is an outside plugin. But it's a really, really easy way to make 3D models and composite them in After Effects. So once you've applied Element, you want to go ahead and go to Custom Layers, Custom Text, and Masks. And select your uh, text. I'm also going to go ahead and double click on the text layer and name it, uh, change the name of it to uh, you know, Introduction or whatever you want your text to be is fine. Once I've done that, I'm going to go back to the element layer, go into the scene setup, and go ahead and extrude what we have on our text layer. If it's not extruding right, make sure you're on the right custom path and you're, you know, yeah, you're on the right custom path for your layer. So like I said, this is going to be just a quick and easy way to do this, so I'm not even going to use any like presets or anything. I'm just going to go ahead and into the bevel and texture um, settings here. Let me expand this a little bit. Go ahead and scroll down to the diffuse color, and I use an orange in the example, so I might do something similar again, you know, just like a, a nice little orange, and go into the reflection, and this is something that helps a little bit just to make it a little bit more visually appealing. Uh, leave the color the same, but I might increase the intensity quite a bit, maybe like 75 or somewhere around there, and increase the Fresnel um, reflection type a lot, which gives it just sort of like more texture on the, the reflection. And maybe increase the bias a little bit too, just like really get it nice and shiny. Now my version of Element is kind of messed up, but you guys can go, probably go ahead and uh, click on Environment right here, so that you can test out the reflection and see how it looks. But I, it doesn't work for me right now, so don't worry about that. And from here, um, I think we're all good. So just go ahead and press OK. All right, so let's go ahead and hide our actual text layer, so we just have our Element text. And you can see it's there, but it's really small, so one really easy way to set up the world transform for it to be nice and easy to work with is select your um, cinematic and select your 3D camera tracker effect to get all these null points. And just go to one of these null points that's in the right spot and create a null from it. And from there you can open up the position and it tells you exactly what the Z position is to be in that spot. So let's go ahead and select our element layer, go to world transform, and you can actually create a world um, transform null here, but I'm just going to do it the basic way, just by copying the Z value on our null and pasting it into the world uh, position Z and hitting apply. So you can see obviously it got a lot smaller at first, but I'm going to go ahead and scale that up a lot. And you're going to want to change the X and Y position to uh, whatever you want it to be. So now you've got that text right in there. And you can even bring it up closer to the camera, maybe a little bit smaller if you want like more of a parallax effect or whatever. This is probably good. Let me go ahead and just move it down a little bit. All right, so there you go. That's the way to set up this really easy text. And let me just show you some tricks to make it look a little bit better. So let's go ahead and go into the render settings. Um, let's hit up ambient occlusion. Make sure you turn that on, especially if you have a lot of bevel. Um, you can increase intensity a little bit and maybe the samples a little bit too. Um, it just adds a lot of realistic shadow to areas that are um, 
close together on your model so like maybe in this n area right here it'll be like more shadowy it just looks more realistic so the next thing you want to do is under the lighting tab you want to um, you can check use the comp lights and you can add your own lights if you want I might be doing that a little bit in this but a really easy and quick way to add a lot of like style to your text is to use one of these presets so if I hit up like dramatic for example you can see already what that does to your text you know maybe stylized or this part you really want to fit the um, the style of your cinematic so this one actually might be a good one it's aqua it has a lot of like blue green which fits the wall of this but it's also a little bit dark for me so I'm probably gonna pick like product perhaps you know let me just go ahead and go with stylized what I'm gonna do is go to layer new light and add a point light and I'm just gonna bring it forward on the z-axis a bit and maybe a little to the left here and I'm gonna select the light layer press AA to open up its settings and maybe change the intensity to 25 percent or you know maybe 33 just to bring it down a little bit you don't want to over over uh, expose your text and I'm gonna change the color to one of these greens here um, from the wall because that's you know it's realistic you know it's part of the environment so it makes it look better and I might increase the intensity actually a little bit you know actually I'm gonna I'm gonna pick my own green because this these greens aren't really doing too much for me so let me just like pick my own like blue green here and you can see that that really helps a lot let me turn it off and turn it back on it really like uh, makes the text look like it's there in the scene let me turn the intensity down just a touch maybe 25% All right, cool. So then there are other couple of tricks that you can do to your cinematic itself to make it look a lot better. One of those that I like to do is depth of field and you know dynamic light rays. Since there's no really sky exposed in this shot, I'm not really gonna go over light rays. I'll probably do it in another video or something, but I can go over depth of field because this is a pretty good one to do it on. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a new adjustment layer and call it depth of field or DOF for short. I'm gonna go ahead and solo it along with our cinematic and turn the audio off with the cinematic. So once I have these two layers soloed, I can just go ahead and um, zoom in here a little bit and grab our pen tool. And I'm just gonna, uh, gonna rotoscope this little uh, billboard thing because this is one of those things that stands out from the natural progression of the depth down the hallway. You know, it gets farther away down the hallway, but this thing is kind of sticking up in the way. So let me just like solo this out just really quick. It's pretty easy. I'm just gonna do a basic job. So once you've done that, um, select your adjustment layer, press M to get your mask path and keyframe it where it's um, in the right spot. And then let's move towards the end here and it stops moving right about there. I'm gonna actually trim up the composition really quick too. And I can just double click these mask points and move it back into position and then click away, reselect the mask, click away again and you can uh, move these points around individually too and fix them up. All right, let me just go ahead and check that over. Looks good to me. Let's do it again at the beginning. And again, since this was a really consistent, smooth cinematic, there's really not a lot of work that has to be done because it it's all the same speed. So, um, you know, you just need like a few keyframes. All right, let's check that out. Good enough for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply a Gaussian blur to this layer. Maybe set it to eight. That's a decent level and make sure you set the feather on the mask to at least like 15 or so. Um, it's probably a little too much blur. Let me just change it down to five maybe. And you can also increase the mask expansion a little bit if it's, uh, if it's you know, um, not far enough to the edges. So once you've done that, I'm gonna actually duplicate the depth of field. So we have depth of field two now and I'm gonna just turn off this mask or actually just go ahead and delete it. So now we, uh, we wanna turn off the effect here for a sec so we can see what we're doing. And what I wanna do actually is just um, make a really quick mask here at the end of the hallway. And that's just really gonna be the extent of this depth of field. It's just gonna be a very subtle effect, but it'll, it'll definitely do a lot. I'll show you, uh, well, let me show you in the main example actually. 
know, you got your depth of field. Um, that's what it looks like without it and with it, you know, it just like helps uh, separate the text, text a bit and make it look a lot nicer. So back in our other comp here, I'm going to go ahead and animate this mask a little bit. So select our depth of field 2, keyframe at mask path, go to the beginning, sort of fix it up. You may have to move the points around a little bit too. And let's go to the end, fix it up. And since the middle one uh, is different than the other two, I'm going to fix that one up too. Alright, so now we just want to turn on our blur effect. And we want to set this to... Uh, actually, add is okay. But we want to really increase the, uh, the mask expansion here. Let's increase it to the point where it's right about the same line of, as our text. You can really increase the blur to really tell what it's doing here. And from there, you just want to feather it out a lot. And this is a really quick way to do depth of field, but there are obviously more uh, more precise ways and more realistic ways. But this is just like like I said, a quick and easy way to make your text look a lot nicer. So let me turn down the feather a little bit here. Don't want it too much. Maybe somewhere in the the range of like 140, 150 pixels. And then from there, I'm going to go ahead and take the blur down to like eight at least, or maybe even like five. And so from there, we're pretty much done. And so if I unsolo these layers, and you want to make sure you put the uh, adjustment layers underneath your element layer, otherwise it'll blur out that too. So there you go. And that definitely looks a lot better than we started with. So another thing, of course, you're going to want to do is go into element and probably do some animation here under group one, uh, you know, particle look, uh, rotation, you know, you can you can use some sort of animations, you know, get the multi-object going too, and and you're really going to want to do that. I'm not going to go over that too much in this video. Now that's, an, that's a really overused uh, effect, but uh, be creative with the animation and don't make it too extreme. You know, it looks nice to, to move very subtle. You get that reflection going too, but I'm not going to go over that right now in this video. The only thing else I really want to cover is... Um, couple of things I do to cinematics. Of course, add some color correction. So uh, I'm going to add a new adjustment layer, rename it to CC. Uh, I'm going to grab curves is really my first go to for color correction. So let's see, grab curves, put it on there and really increase the contrast with a nice S curve. You don't want to go too far in either direction. You don't want your blacks to go under uh, zero zero. So like up here, for example, is almost, it's like a really high shadow. So you don't want this to go full, full black. And you can tell in the upper right hand corner under the info panel right here, uh, you don't want those values to be crushed at zero. Otherwise it looks weird. So uh, maybe I can go a little darker, but not really too much more than that. And then, you know, the brights, you can bump those up a little bit. <clears throat> and from here, I'm going to throw on magic bullet looks, go under edit. And uh, here's a couple of easy things to do. Grab, you know, a three-way color corrector. Make the shadows more blue. Maybe the mid-tones a little warmer. And the highlights a little blue, too. Just a very quick three-way color correction. And maybe bump the saturation down to, like, 90%. And I'll drag that before the three-way color corrector. So it applies first. And hit finished. And that helps a lot. And, yeah... It's a really easy way to do nice 3D text. And actually, let me go over something else. You can you can add, obviously, effects to the element layer itself. So let's say if I duplicate the element layer, and on the bottom one, I add like a blur, like a Gaussian blur. So what that'll do is add sort of like a halo around the text, you can see. Um, here, this is without it and with it, you know. And that can sort of help, depending on what look you're going for. You can make it black if I... Uh, tint it to all black. You know, it's, it's drop shadow now. There's really many ways to like stylize the element layer itself, but the main thing I wanted to go over is um, is the depth of field and the easy way to set up the text, even without bevels, because I feel like the bevels are overused at this point. Uh, one other thing I want to go over is if you're in a main comp here, for example, and I import the comp we just worked on, which is going to be a pre-comp, 
enable time remapping control alt T and bring that in um, a, nice, a nice way to add some motion to your video is just to do some sort of um, time ramp with the graph editor just make three keyframes and make this one easy ease out easy ease in and then easy ease in general and you can start it off fast or slow or whatever usually people start off fast and slow it down a bit for the middle part but you don't want to go flat you want to like even it out and then on the last one you probably want to bring it back fast again something like that nice S curve and to make that effect even better if you go into the comp itself I'm actually going to select this all and pre comp this call it whatever pre comp and then I can scale this up a little bit and then add a wiggle expression which I'm sure you guys are familiar with bring up position alt click position I'm gonna wiggle this maybe 0.5 comma uh, 50 maybe we'll see how that looks it might be a little bit too much let me just go ahead and ram preview yeah it's way too much so go back in here maybe change the second number which is the amount to like 20 not 2.0 20 <clears throat> maybe increase the scale a little bit more to get rid of those black bars and maybe bring up rotation a little bit as well to like rotate it from one side to another over the course of the cinematic and then back into the main comp here let's preview it for one last time yeah, I might tweak this some more, honestly, like, it's really not perfect, um, I really don't like the time ramp I just did right here, but, uh, you can see in the main, um, in the first example, I definitely had more lighting on the text, and I think this actually probably looks better to, like, brighten it up, so just add another light, you can even add light behind it, just go, you know, layer, new light, whatever, and, uh, you can really stylize up your text really, really easily by adding different color lights, too. So uh, keep that in mind, guys, and I hope this video helped you out, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.